Hey everyone. So today we'll try to understand the concept of query parameters, headers, and cookies in Python's request module. So let's try to understand this using an example. So okay. So right now what you see on the screen is a, an API, and this API what it does is it provides us the list of products in our server. So right now this API is hosted locally. So this this is basically I have created it using Django REST framework, and I have hosted it locally. And this is slash products endpoint can help us to get the list of products listed in our website. So if I just click on enter, you will see that I get two products right now. And these this is like ID three is short, ID four is a shoe, right? <laughs> so right now we are getting our response, and that's good. But let's try to understand the concept of query parameters here. So our API is giving us the response like ID three and ID four. But can I filter my data? Can I filter my product list? Can I sort my field product list? Can I, uh, you know, uh, do some kind of request? Do some, that request which can just, you know, not give me this response, but give me some different response. So for that, we use make use of the query parameter. So right now you see something like params, and this is the Postman environment where we can pass the query parameter like from this particular user interface. We can pass it in another way as well. So this query parameters is actually used to filter our data can be used to sort our data. So basically it's like providing some information to our server to change the response of our data. So right now, if you see, I'm getting two data. So my API is implemented in such a way that I can get more than two data, but I need to pass a query parameter. So let's try to pass it So the it is limit and I can specify the number of items I want in my response. So if I say five and send it, so you will see what will happen. We have one, two, three, four, and five products listed. So what happened is I, from a client perspective, using Postman, gave some information to my server that hey, you are giving me by default, you are giving me two products. I don't want two products. Like you are giving me by default two products, right? I want five products. So can I do it? So the API has defined the, this particular way that okay, pass the limit and tell the number. I said okay, limit is five. So it gave me five responses, right? Uh, from the response, you will see that total count is 12. So I know that we have right now 12 products in our website. So I can make a limit of maximum of 12, right? Now, when I say limit five, so it is giving me first five data from ID number three, four, five, eight, and nine. These are the first five data, right? The IDs are actually not in order. So like it is it is in order, but few IDs are missing because those are deleted. So you see three, four, five, eight, and nine. These are the first five data. Can I just skip few data and get the like the limit of five? I, I'm saying I need five data, but can I get five data, but not starting from the first one, but starting from the seventh one, or maybe starting from the third one? So for that also, our API has defined a query parameter that you need to pass offset. So if I say offset. And the value three and send it. So what happened is I am still getting one, two, three, four, and five data, but now I'm getting it from ID number three. The ID three, four, and five, those IDs are now skipped, and I'm directly getting it from ID number eight. Because uh, if I just remove offset, so you will see that three, four, and five are the first three data, and the fourth one is eight. But I don't want the first three data, make an offset of three and send it. So what is happening when we are pa passing the query parameters is we are giving the ability like the server has given the, us the ability to you know pass these parameters and the server will respond according to this. So basically we are able to filter our data, right? So this filtering of data can be done using this query parameter. So can we do the same using Python's request library? So let's try to do that. So I'm in the PyCharm environment and let's try to import the requests module. And we'll also import the JSON. We'll see why we are doing it. Now, how can I make this request? So if you focus on this request, this is a get request made to, uh, let me remove this, made to these, made, made to this particular endpoint, okay? So let's copy this and make a request to it. So how can we make a get request? So we can say requests dot get, and we need to pass the URL, right? When we pass this URL and just print r dot JSON, uh, okay, I need to just print it in a bit uh, presentable way. So I will say JSON dot term. Inside that, I will say R dot JSON. Whatever JSON response I'm getting, I will indent it. 
uh, it's an indentation of port. And let me run this one. When I'm running it, I'm just getting it at, hey, the authentication conditions were not provided. Now, here is the concept of headers. So let's try to understand both of the concepts and then try to uh, you know implement the code. So what we can do right now is, okay, let's go to Postman and try to understand from headers perspective. So this is the query parameter which is used to filter our data, whatever data the server has to return to us. But there are a few things more which we need to provide to our server that authenticates us or maybe that tells about us, right? So those things need to be provided in the headers. So understand these two things. Parameters are used to provide data to our server, which can, you know, filter your response. This response can be filtered. But how the server will know about you that who is making this request, these, these all things are need to be provided in the headers. So right now you see there are a few headers provided. So if I just remove this one now and send it again, so you will see the same response I'm getting here. This is the same response I'm getting here as well, right? So it means that I'm I'm providing something from Postman and sending it, then only I'm getting the response back and I'm not doing it over here. It means that there is something, there is a header which is missing in our request in our Python code. Now, what is this header? We'll focus on it, but let's focus on few headers which are already provided here. So there are headers like Postman, Token, Post, User Agent, Accept, Accept Encoding and Connection. Now, what are these headers basically doing? These are these headers are actually, uh, you know, added by the Postman itself. Uh, like I'm not added from myself, but the Postman is added it. But what these headers does is it provides the information about the agent or the client who is making the request to the server. So these are the information which the client, which is about the client, basically the Postman client, for an example, uh, what's the user agent? So Postman is saying the user agent is Postman runtime. So our server can access this header value and understand it. Okay, this request is coming from Postman or uh, using the user agent. Uh, I can pass another header called uh, like star and star, star by star. That basically means to our server that the user can accept any information, like any and any data type the user can accept. If I just say that, hey, uh, accept value should be application JSON. So it means our server will try to know that, okay, the one who is requesting this particular request, it wants our, a response in application JSON. So see, this, this information will provide the data about your user that what the user can accept, what the user is, right? So, and also it also provides, this header can be used to provide the information of your authenticity. So there are servers like this, if I just click on enter, it is not providing us a detail if I do not provide an authentication of myself. So this server accepts a token. So if I just say authorization as the header and the value will be token space the token key and then send the request, then only it will give me the response. So headers is basically providing us the information about the user, its authenticity. So these are the details provided in the headers. How can we do it in the Python code? So right now we have not provided the filters as well. Let's first try to provide the headers. So we can create headers using a dictionary. So let's try to first create the header. So H is equal to a dictionary. And this, this in this dictionary will pass our headers value. Okay. So I can say, uh, what header do I need to pass? I need to pass an authorization header. The key should be authorization. So I need to create a key authorization and pass a value to it. What is the value? So I can copy this and paste it over here. And now how can I, if I don't know, if I just create it and run it, it won't work because my request.get should know about this header, right? So how it will know about this? So just pass a header is equal to H. And now just make this request. So now you are getting the response. We are getting the response, right? And this is the by default response we are getting when we are hitting the product end. Okay. Now we know that how can we pass the headers and what is the importance of headers basically telling us about the user who is making the request. But okay, I you know about the user. Can you filter my data? This is the question here. So yes, the header, the, the request library can filter our data just like Postman can do it just by passing these key parameters. So how can we pass it using this request library? What we can do is <clears throat> we can create the parameters first. 
So let's create the filter parameters, filter params. And this will again be a dictionary. Okay. Like this. Let me pass limit. So I want five data, right? How can I pass this filter parameter to my request.get? Because I've created my parameter in a dictionary, but I have not passed it to my request library uh, or, or the request call. So I can say params is equal to this filter params, right? And once I make this request, you will see that now we are getting one, two, three, four, and five data, right? So we are able to pass query parameters. Also, we are able to pass headers, right? So this is this is the way to pass headers and query parameters in your request. And right now we are doing it on a API hosted locally, but this will this concept will be similar for any API for which you will be using this concept, right? Passing the filters or passing the query parameters. Can I pass more than one filter or more than one uh, header? Definitely, we can just say a uh, custom header and I can pass it, right? There is some spelling mistake, but the concept is similar. Okay, the custom header, right? I can pass here, I can give it any name, ABC and or anything. Similarly, I can pass another filter parameter like offset. And I can say offset value to be one, okay? Once I say this and run this, uh, okay, it is saying that header part one, two, three from ABC must be of type string or byte and not integer. So it is so this is being raised by my server that I want any header in a string format, not an integer format, right? So once I done this, uh, and hit it. So right now I'm getting a response. What is the response? ID four, five, eight, nine, and ten because the first ID is skipped. We have an offset of one, right? So now we know what is query parameter and how we can implement it as well as the headers. Let's try to focus on a part called as cookie. So we'll do it quickly. So we'll do it using like we'll try to understand it, it using this API, the HTTP bin.org. So right now, if we are making a request to this website and click on enter, what this website does is it finds out what are the cookies stored for this particular uh, API in my system. So basically, basically cookies are stored in, in, in the user system. So right now, if I'm making a request to this library, uh, this, to this endpoint, uh, so if it stores, if this server, HTTP bin.org, try to store some information in my system, it will store it using cookies. And this information will be stored in my system, right? So how can we store some cookies? How can we set some cookies? So for this one, I can say set, and I can pass some data. Click on enter. And now if I see the cookies of it, so these are the cookies stored for this website in my system. Uh, right. So what does this what, what this cookie does is it stores some user preferences, some user data in my system. So that the server, next time when the when we hit the server, the server will know about us already. And based on what it knows, it will just based on that, it will give us a response. Uh, right. So Right now, we are able to get fetch these cookies. If you go to the cookie section, you will see that these are the cookies set in my system for this website. Can we do the same using Postman? So yes, we can do it. Let's go back to the, or uh, not Postman, but the PyCharm using our Python code, right? So let me let me comment it out and let me comment this as well. Let me, let me comment everything. What we'll do is we'll create a new request r is equal to request dot get and let's try to get this one okay this endpoint uh let's try to print this okay uncomment it and run it back okay so we are we are getting a we are getting an error because we need to pass this key message x let's pass this and hit the enter and right now we are getting the cookies is as empty how can we pass some cookies to my website so that when we and see the guy see guys the thing is this website is designed in such a way this api is designed in such a way that when you when you uh, when we pass some cookies to it it will return the same thing as a cookie to our system and it will store it so let me show you that if i just create a cookie cookie or uh, data is equal to again it has to be a dictionary and i say my user id is one two three okay this is what i want 
uh, or this is what the server might, might want to store in our system as a key. So I can create it, but can I pass it to my request? So yes, we can do it. We'll say cookies is equal to cookie data. And once I make this request, hit on enter. Uh, okay, so it is saying that it expect a string or byte like object because this has to be a string. And once you hit the enter, see right now what response it is giving that we have set like this website cookie has been set in our system and this is the value of it, right? Uh, uh, okay, so now we know that how we can set a cookie or how can we send a cookie to a particular website? Uh, what if some particular website is returning us the cookie? So how can we fetch that? So right now this might not return us any cookie data. This is only showing us that okay for this website. These are the key cookies stored in my system uh, using this particular value we have sent it. Uh, let's try to make a request to some website or some API which actually returns some cookie. For example, www.google.com. If we make a request to this one, let me show. So what it will do is it will return us some cookie as well. So once we go here and try to print once, like once you make a request to this and try to print what are the cookies return, you will see that response. R dot by writing the R dot cookies, you can get what are the cookies returned by this google.com to your system. If I enter it, you will see that there is a request cookies are object return and there are few data which is here. Uh, let, let me just convert it to, into a dictionary and it will be more visible to you. Once I click on this, this is now a dictionary and I can say JSON dot terms. Term this dictionary with an indentation. With an indentation of four, indentation four, and now I run it, and now you will see that these are the cookies returned by Google.com to my system, and these cookies will be stored. So these are the concepts of query parameters, headers, and cookies. How can we use them in Python request library? How they are used uh, when we are making a request using Postman? So hope this helps you in some way. And next time we'll try to understand more about the request module. For now, this is it.